Hi, this is a quick demo of uh, EC102 Digital Logic uh, Lab Project. Um, in this class, we use uh, the Altera DE2 FPGA board and we program um, logic circuits in it. And uh, the nice thing about FPGAs is that you can uh, make them uh, very parallel uh, processing as opposed to a uh, mi normal microcontroller where you can only do one thing at a time and FPGA can do hundreds or thousands of things all at the same time. So this snake game, um, every single one of these LED cells um, basically has its own uh, processor. So there's not really any um, global uh, processor that controls it all. So it's a fully parallel snake game. and. Uh, so if we do a demo here, press start, um, it'll spawn you in a random location. Uh, you drive around the snake looking for food. The food um, is these, are these blinking dots. The food will appear in a, a semi-random uh, place uh, every time you eat the old food. Um, your score is uh, right here. And these red lights here uh, show the state of which controller buttons are pressed down. And uh, you can pause the game by using the right if you want to inspect something. And uh, if you use the left, uh, you can show the location of the random, random bucket brigade seed. So this is how we get a random number. Um, basically, it just loops around in a in a square by square pattern and depending on the time that you need the random cell initialized whoever has the bucket at that point will um, get the spawn the new food or spawn the new um, snake when you press start so let's take a quick look at uh, how this is implemented um, this is implemented using uh, solely Quartus's uh, schematic editor uh, didn't use any Verilog or VHDL or anything like that uh, that's one of the reasons I chose Snake because it's a pretty simple game um, so we first look at the uh, display controller um, basically there's 16 lines that for one for each row and each of these lines has 16 column datas and they're all multiplexed and there's a counter that um, sends out a clock that will count down the rows um, so that clock goes into these chips which are decade counters and then um, to get enough current to pull down 16 LEDs at once we have these Darlington arrays which um, have uh, built-in protection and stuff and uh, only draw you know one milliamp to switch you know, a couple hundred milliamps and uh, as far as the current for the columns um, each LED takes 20 milliamps and 20 milliamps is what the uh, Altera's outputs are set to so that worked out pretty nicely since that uh, this way uh, the outputs are never get overloaded uh, since each one only has to has to power one LED at a time. Uh, there's also a synchronizer here uh, on the 17th pulse. It sends a reset signal to the decade counters to um, keep everything in sync, so you don't get one high or one low somehow if you miss a clock pulse. Um, go back to the main, uh, let's just look at the controller input really quickly. Uh, the controller input is basically a shift register. Um, so there's, these are the 12, um, this is basically a custom made uh, serial and parallel out shift register. So all of these outputs are the uh, state of the buttons. Um, these hold the state uh, in the parallel outputs while the new state is being shifted in down here and uh, we send out a clock and we send out a latch and the latch um, latches the shift register that's inside the controller and uh, then we clock the bits into our flip-flops 
in the in the DE2, um, and then once we have everything clocked in, we latch it internally into these uh, state holding flip flops. Uh, also, there's uh, something to prevent. There's this XOR here to prevent you pressing um, two arrow keys at the same time, because on the controller you can't press like up left, which um, wouldn't work for Snake. So this just makes it exclusive or um, up, down, left, right. So if we want to look at the um, actual signals, uh, if we mash a bunch of buttons here, we can see the signals go high. Um, and we can see the uh, shift register signals. So there's the shift register right there, um, the data from the SN Super Nintendo controller, and then this is the output of the Super Nintendo uh, controller controller, <laughs> the shift register inside the uh, Altera that um, tells everything else what, the, what buttons are being pressed. So that's the basic controller, and then um, See, we have a clock divider here to divide down the clock to a reasonable frequency. Um, nothing real fancy about that. We have a, and then the main logic is uh, here. So here you see four eight by eights, and they're um, all connected so that when you go off the, uh, they're connected like a Mobius strip, I guess. So when you go off the left, you come in the right. When you go off the top, you come in the bottom. Um, so that's why there's so many connections. And these are uh, just some bus combiners that have XORs so I can um, flip the color from, of the LEDs from normally on to normally off. I do that when you lose. Uh, so you see all the colors, all the green ones go on to show you that you lose. And then you have to press. Uh, select to reset and then start to start. And uh, so each of these is an 8x8, eight eight, so inside of them is 8 uh, columns. Inside each column is 8 row cells. And then this is the actual um, uh, state machine that's inside of every single uh, LED cell. Um, this is the fully parallel part. Uh, so you have uh, north, south, east, west. These are the head coming in. Um, and then we latch the head in so that we know we have the head in our cell right now. Um, and then uh, we decide, we use the controller inputs to decide which way, uh, which is the next cell we should pass the snake head to. Um, over here we have the random bucket brigade that functions as a randomizer. Um, over here we store, uh, when we are in possession of the snake head, we latch in the uh, current body length from the body length accumulator. Um, there's only one body length accumulator so that uh, it's easier to display the score here. Um, that's really the body length accumulator is the only part that's not really uh, fully parallel. Uh, I could have done the body length accumulator and made all of these um, buses and kept it fully, fully parallel, but then I wouldn't have been able to show the score very easily. So uh, Then uh, these lines here are the events. Um, there's an event for the uh, bucket passing, an event for the, uh, to spawn a food, an event uh, to increment the body length counter if you eat, and an event um, if you crash into your own uh, body, an event to uh, stop the game. Um, here's the flip-flops that hold the food, and this flip-flop makes the food cell um, blink, so it's more obvious. Um, and uh, that's about it. We basically just, this is the final output that controls whether uh, the LED is on or off here. So uh, that's it for my uh, 
demo, um, the lessons I learned while making this uh, are async is bad. Um, generally, always you want uh, you want to um, synchronize up uh, with a global clock, and you want to all of your outputs from any kind of area. You want to have a, a flip flop on them so that they all get synced up. Um, you see it. There's a sync up output there, and then there's a. Theoretically, you could do this without it, but it works completely differently every time. If it, if you do it asynchronous, your results can be completely different every time you compile it. <laughs> as far as running on the actual hardware, um, and then. See, this has a flip-flop at the output. Everything has a flip-flop, almost pretty much everything has flip-flops at the output to, um, like all these, to keep everything synced up. And uh, the other things I learned was um, to simulate small blocks, even if you think <laughs> the block is so simple you can't possibly um, have gotten it wrong, you still need to simulate it or else you'll waste a lot of time. Um, the, and the uh, final thing that I learned um, is this really nice uh, built-in uh, uh, logic analyzer uh, called Signal Trap. Um, really, makes, uh, really makes life easier. Uh, so you can see in real time what, what what all the buttons are pressing without even having to hook up any oscilloscope. Um, so those are what I learned, and uh, thanks for watching.